Um, thank you, Andrew, and hello, everyone. Um, today, we are going to present our work on polarized graph neural networks. And first, we will introduce the research background and motivation of our work. And as we know, graph structured data is ubiquitous in the real world, such as um, social networks, um, citation networks, and molecular graphs. Various types of graphs are considered to share a common property, homophily, which means kinetic nodes tend to have similar labels. Most of the existing words are designed on the basis of the inductive bias and make use of the similarities between nearby nodes. Methods passing graph neural networks are popular representatives, which aggregate neighbors' features in a stack, manner, stack layer manner. Some theoretical words have shown the equivalence between the message passing mechanism and an optimization, optimization objective to maximize the similarities among adjacent nodes. Although message passing GNNs have empirically been verified powerful on extensive benchmarks, the strong inductive bias of homophily limits the generalization ability for broader scenarios. Uh, for example, for, apart from homophilic graphs like citation networks, there are also many graphs in which nodes prefer to form edges with those of other classes. Uh, we call such property heterophily. Typical examples are protein molecular graphs where different types of amino acids are likely to contact. Um, because message passing GNNs assume that uh, most of the neighbors are similar to the central node, they fail to achieve satisfactory performance with heterophily increasing. Issues about heterophily have gained increasing concerns and a substantial number of words address them through either reducing the impacts uh, from dissimilar neighbors when calculating aggregation weights or dropping dissimilar neighbors and then relinking similar nodes. Such methods focus on filtering dissimilar neighbors while paying little attention to the utilization of dissimilarities. When homophilic links are sparse, which is general in the heterophilic situations, these methods may discard too many information and become in effect, in, inefficient and ineffective. Therefore, it is crucial to leverage dissimilarities in an active manner rather than eliminate them passively. We get insight from an interesting observation in social psychology, which is known as attitude polarization. Attitude polarization means that after the presented uh, materials are mingling opposing opinions, people would neither be convinced or change their attitude to a neutral one, but would rather become more extreme. For example, uh, people holding conservative political views become more conservative after following a Twitter bot of their opponents and vice versa. As a result, people would have a stronger sense of belonging to their original groups and the difference between groups are more apparent. There are several possible explanations of this phenomenon, which can be summarized as two steps. Two steps. First, judging whether the target is consistent with one's belief and then decide to accept or derogate the target according to the formal judgment. Inspired by the process of attitude polarization uh, that occurs during message exchanging, we propose to introduce dissimilarities into message passing GNNs. However, there are two main challenges to be solved. On one hand, we need to mine similarities and dissimilarities. Intuitively, based on the definition of homophily, similarities and dissimilarities should be related to no labels. However, in reality, we do not have access to labels of all nodes. Therefore, we need to mine similarities and dissimilarities with prior knowledge on the graphs, such as node features and topological structures. On the other hand, we need to design an aggregation mechanism to treat message discriminatively. 
according to our insight, messages from neighbors should be differently aggregated depending on whether they are similar to the central node or not. However, it remains a tricky problem to design an expressive operator to take advantage of both similar, similar and dissimilar information. To address the above challenges, here we propose the polarized graph neural networks, we call it a polar GNN. The mechanism of our model is consistent with that of attitude polarization. Here is an overview of our model. First, the similarities or dissimilarities between two nodes are measured through combining their facial vectors with structural representations. Then, we project the node embeddings to a hyperspherical space to ensure the norms equal. Whereafter, the polarization operation is performed to acquire more distinguishable representations by which similar nodes are pulled together and the dissimilar ones are separated. Traditional message passing GNNs like GAT only focus on similarities between a neighbor node and a central node. The indicator is always positive, uh, which is higher for similar neighbors and close to zero for, for dissimilar ones. They later use this indicator as an aggregation weight. Therefore, dissimilar neighbors contribute little to the updation of central node embedding. For graphs with strong heterophily, most of neighbors' information will be ignored. Instead, we extend the value domain of similarity evaluation function to minus one to one, by which positive weights are obtained for the similar node pairs and negative weights for those similar dissimilar ones. What's more, considering that topological structure features are dispensable in graph data mining, we introduce anonymous walks to characterize structure features for nodes when calculating aggregation weights. An anonymous walk is similar to traditional random walk, but the exact identities of the nodes are removed. It is theoretically proved that the local graph structure around a node can be reconstructed by anonymous walks starting from it. Here for each node, we sample a set of anonymous walk sequences starting from it with central length and vectorize the distribution of the sequences to get the structural representation of the node. Then we, calculated the, uh, we calculate the structural weights in the same way as above. We then reach the final weights by combining the two items in a hyperparameter to balance the importance. The goal of the neighbor aggregating is to make similar nodes closer and the similar ones separated in the representation space. Plenty of existing methods could only focus on the former due to their non-negative aggregating weights, and little attention is paid to the latter. Uh, this part will concentrate on the effective utilization of the dissimilar neighbors. An intuitive way is to directly use the indicator as aggregation weight we get in the previous step by separating the similar and dissimilar neighbors in this equation, we can see that the information from dissimilar neighbors are well utilized and plays a repulsive role in the aggregating process. We call, this, uh, we call this aggregation the polarization operation, since it's similar to attitude polarization. However, if no normalization is performed, note with more neighbors will have larger norms. This will not only lead to a poor convergent result, but also cast the nodes with larger norm out of the cluster, which harms the polarization effect. Nevertheless, we, due to the existence of the negative weights, we cannot use normal ways of normalization on weights. Consequently, we directly normalize the node embeddings by projecting that to a um, hyperspherical space to keep norms, uh, keep equal norms. In this case, the polarization operation can be viewed as this distribution of nodes in representations on a hypersphere. And the expectation is to pull similar nodes closer and push 
dissimilar ones away from each other. We theoretically demonstrate that the polarization operation can be viewed as an approximately so approximate solution of a constraint optimization problem, which clusters similar neighbors and separates the similar ones on a hypersphere. To keep pace with the hyperspherical embedding space, we introduce a spherical version of cross entropy loss. Furthermore, we add an additive angular penalty to enlarge the geodesic distance margin and enforce a node representation closer to its target vector than others. We evaluate our model on eight real-world data sets with different edge homophily. First, we evaluate the semi-supervised node classification performance of polar GNN against the state-of-the-art space lines. With heterography increasing, polar GNN achieves the best performance. To validate the effectiveness of the negative weights, we visualize the node embeddings generated by four models. We observe that GCN performs worse in separating different classes of nodes because its behavior to indiscriminately branch all neighbors. And since GAT weakens the impact of some dissimilar neighbors and performs most of the convolution among similar nodes, the distances between intra-class nodes are reduced. However, there is no repulsive force between nodes belonging to different classes, which means they may gather in the same area finally. And for FAGCN and polar GNN, thanks to the negative weights, nodes will, from the same class are clustered closely and dissimilar nodes are clearly separated. Notice that the simultaneous use of features and structural information assists polar GNN in better estimating the similarities and dissimilarities between nodes and thus achieves better separation. Also, polar GNN helps alleviate the oversmooth problem through polarization operation. We compare with GCN and GAT, which can only assign positive weights to neighbors and pull the adjacent nodes together. It is obvious that the performances of GCN and GAT dropped rapidly, while the performance of polar GNN changes much slower as the model grows deeper. In the end of this talk, we make a conclusion of our contribution. First, we through introducing the attitude polarization in social psychology, we mark a significant step in effectively and actively utilizing dissimilarities when performing aggregation. Second, we propose polar GNN, which imitates the mechanism of attitude polarization. A polar GNN first generates polarized waste through jointly considered the node features and the structure information, and then perform polarized aggregation on a hypersphere to achieve more distinguishable results. Lastly, we conduct experiments on multiple real world data sets and our model exists by a large margin, existing so tests on certain ones and demonstrate that the effectiveness of our design. That's all of our presentation and thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you, Zhang. We will also have some time for questions from the audience. You can either voice them or ask in chat and they'll voice them for you. Uh, hello, uh, can you hear me? Um, I have a question. Uh, and, did, yes. and did you, okay, okay. And did you compute the similarity to the dissimilarity this, this ratio for your model and other business? Because I think the Realization is not uh, very obvious to, to show the dissimilarity or, or similarity. Uh, pardon, I, I cannot hear much. Uh, <clears throat> Could you repeat the question, please? OK, OK. Uh, I say that, uh, did you compute the similarity to this similarities ratio 
using the using the method. Uh, do you mean the visualization result? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean the visualization is uh, maybe. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, and here the negative ways make nodes from the same class close and base and they similar nodes separated. And I mean that um, the, uh, you use a realization to say uh, say this fact. And I, I, I want to know do you uh, compute uh, a value about the ratio uh, between the similarity or dissimilarity? Uh, uh do you, what do you mean by the ratio? Uh, you mean uh, the uh, the ratio that the neighbor uh, nodes that are is dissimilar uh, that are dissimilar to the central node? Well, I mean that uh, for the baseline model, I think the uh, for baseline model they can also make nodes from the same class closed and they similar nodes separated. So uh, I think your model is more powerful to make this uh, uh, the dissimilarity more obviously. Uh, yes. Um, in fact, the baseline of GCN and GAT, they, um, although they, they, um, they can somewhat uh, separate, but it is not obvious to separate the nodes from different classes. Uh, here, the heterography, uh, we, we mean that um, nodes are from different classes are, yes. So it is, um, I think it is more obvious that um, our model can better separate it and cluster the nodes from the same class and separate the nodes from different classes. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Um, if we are able to answer the question really quickly, uh, the second question from the audience is, hello, one question here in slide 20, what does dissimilar nodes mean? Nodes that have dissimilar features or from different classes? Uh, yes, um, uh, here we uh, we define the heterography from uh, nodes from different classes different classes. However, we do not have access to the known labels, labels. So during training, we do not know which node is from the same class and which node is from different classes. So, so we use the node features and structural information to estimate the, um, the probability of the, whether they are from the same class. Yes. Thank you. Um, so the interest of time, any further questions should be directed to the authors directly.